Hello there. It's been a while since I last saw you. I've been away for a few days with the family, which was very nice. And that didn't leave me much time to make videos, edit them or upload them, unfortunately. I did, however, fit in a couple of short hunts with a couple of really great guys from down south. Uh, I forget exactly where they were from. It was somewhere near London. <laughs> I cannot remember where they were from. But David and Bud, I really enjoyed hunting with you. Thank you very much. First hunt we went on was up to one of David's permissions, right up in North Northumberland. So arriving just in time for my e-track is a surprise. And the first thing that strikes me about this is the weight, or lack thereof. And this is a 13 inch coil from Detechnics in the UK, and this is the ultimate coil for the e-track. I'm going to give this a go on this new site. Now the picture on the front's got a white one. It doesn't want to be white. I like black. Get in there, it's black. Now on these two hunts I was using the E-Track with the new 13 inch D-Tech Ultimate Coil that I got literally days before. Um, David was using, what was he using? He was using the Deus with the 11 inch coil and Bud was using the CTX 3030 and in the first fields I think he had the 11 inch stock coil on. He then switched to the 17 or 18 inch big coil when we dropped back onto one of my permissions. We all found something and whilst there was nothing outstanding found, there was two really interesting items they were actually found on one of my permissions that we dropped back onto first dig good signal from seven or eight inches and it's a half penny it's in poor condition but it's a old head victoria that'll be late 1800s this was a Absolutely banging signal, approximately six to seven inches down, and looks like a half penny, possibly Georgian. Yes, George the third, hippie. That gave a slamming signal. That looks like an old pen knife from about eight or nine inches. Yep. Definitely old pen knife. Looks like the handle's actually made of horn as well. A horn handled pen knife. That's not a bad find. Well, this was an absolutely slamming signal. I thought it was right on the top, but it's actually down ooh, maybe six inches or so. It looks like we've got a buckle. Quite a nice buckle. Yeah, it's a good one, that one. I was reading 12.40 on the E-Track, and as I say, it was an absolutely banging signal. Nearly took my ears off. That's a nice buckle. Well, that was a canny old depth. Six, seven inches, maybe. And I think that's the first musket ball of the day. Another signal so loud, I thought it was on the top. I think that was reading 12.35 or thereabouts. And we've got another buckle by the looks of it. Yeah, pretty rusty. Nothing spectacular. Definitely one X, isn't it? Mm. Those two little dots there. Not sure what that is, like. No. That's nice. Yeah, it's unusual. I've never found anything no. like that up here. It's funny how it's on the inside, it's sort of squared off. Yeah, I mean, that's what's protected it, isn't it? I mean, if that had been flat in the ground, it would have just. Uh, you're right, bud. It's lead, is it? That's no, like a disc. Huh? 
30 don't lie. Uh, <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you pay the 700 quid extra for, isn't it? <laughs> you see it's got a hole in the middle? Yeah. I thought it was maybe a whirly gig if it had two holes in. Oh, aye. Oh, yeah. I found a few of them with the teeth on, little, little, little yeah. sawmill things. Yeah, I was just reading the plug on him, uh, John Winter's plug. It might be a dress weight. Possibly, aye. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Hard of them needed. Another mega loud signal, wasn't very deep, maybe it's four or five inches, but here it looks like we've got a hairpenny, half pence, in incredibly worn condition. Uh, I think that says 1920, so that'll be a George V. Well, I was just saying to the lads, we hadn't even found so much as a musket ball. And that looks very much to me like a musket ball. That gave a great signal. I was reading 12.30. And, oh, I think it was not even four inches deep. Nice round musket ball. And a great signal. Very loud. Here's an example of just how loud some of these signals are. Reading 12.46, and by the sounds of it, it's right on the top. There we go, an old penny in extremely bad condition, but that gave an absolutely cracking signal. Very, very loud. Cannot miss that. Well, that 13 inch DTEC coil is very good, very responsive, picks out targets amongst iron very well. It covers a little bit more land than the stock coil, and it seems to get deep. The deeper signals, kind of, you know, eight, nine inches, are extremely loud and clear, certainly very diggable. I would say more loud and more clear than with the 11 inch stock coil. Signal wise and depth wise, it's pretty much on par with that 18 inch coil that I use, but it's a hell of a lot lighter. And in the next video, I'm actually gonna go to a coin shooting site. I'm just gonna be bashing coins amongst the trash, seeing what I can find using the E-Track and the 13 inch DTEC Ultimate Coil. And I'll be giving you more thoughts on it as well, because so far I'm very impressed. This was jumping all over the place, this signal, but it was it was reading more or less to the right hand side. Oh, hi up. Another musket ball. Get in there. Slightly smaller that one, from about yeah three inches or so. No great depth, but it still gave a really good, loud, diggable signal. Now this signal was amongst a load of really dodgy signals, so it did well to pick this out. Quite a nice little double-ended buckle. Down on it, I could see the rust in the saw, and I thought, oh, it's just deep <laughs> bloody iron. How thick is it, though? It could be there for another five or six hundred yeah. years, and it wouldn't rust away, yeah. that. Bloody hell. Well, it's another unusual-looking lump of lead. Definitely got something embossed in there, but it's not Roman numerals like Bud's piece. Not quite sure what that is, but I'm going to give this to Bud and he can give it to the museum to have a look at. Very unusual. Now if anybody has any idea what these lead items are, please put it in the comment section because we didn't have a clue. Bud's actually taken them to the British Museum and they're going to have a look because they're, they're really unusual. It's almost like a little coffin with numbers or some sort of marks in them. They're very unusual. Now here's a video from a guy called Mark from the Netherlands and in this video you're going to see not only the gear that he takes while he's detecting but how he transports it from his house to his detecting sites. It's a great video. Please subscribe to my channel.
Hi everybody, uh, in this video I would like to show you what I bring along when I'm going metal detecting. Uh, first up is the XP Deus with the standard coil. It's uh, very light in weight and uh, no, uh, it's totally wireless, so uh, it's an excellent machine. Uh, I have the control box version 3.2 and I have the standard headphones. Um, then I have a big army belt and on the army belt goes the Garrett finds pouch, the Garrett digging tool and the Garrett pro pointer with uh, the Papa Duty's uh, cover. And I'm bringing along my camera, number one, and number two is the pivot head camera with uh, the camera right between the glasses. That goes in a protective case, and the other com camera goes in here. And some gloves, and shovel number one, that's an army shovel. Uh, or shovel number two that I got from uh, a UK rallying, rally and um, it depends on where I'm going to hunt and I don't have a car so um, when I'm detecting alone I will uh, use my bike and I'm going to show you uh, how I uh, transport everything on my bike all right this is my bike and I'm going to show you how I transport everything. So, a shovel goes in here. Also, the detector. Pro box, the pinpointer, pivot head camera, and the uh, uh, headphones. And on this side, the gloves and the rest, army belt, the Garrett digger, and leave some space for uh, food and drinks. And I have the water bottle. So that's about it. I'm ready to go. I can hunt now. Please subscribe to my channel. Thanks very much for that Mark, much appreciated and I love the idea of loading a bike up and going out, I was going to say into the hills, I don't really fancy the idea of pedalling with all that weight up into the hills where I go detecting. In the Netherlands there's not many hills so you can travel for miles with plenty of weight, good on you. Now if anybody out there that's watching has got a similar video where you want to explain what gear you have, you want to do a review, you want to show off some of your finds, you want to give some tips, product reviews, whatever you want to do connected with detecting, make a short video, send me the link and I'll put it in one of my videos. That way hopefully you'll get a lot of people viewing not only my video but in turn your videos and also subscribing to you. And get the word out there that there is a hell of a lot of good detecting channels out there that are quite often way down in the rankings. I like to get them back up in the rankings because there's a lot of folks really passionate, making good discoveries, making nice videos. I want to see them up there. So you can help with that. I help you to help yourself. Now the reason I haven't had many videos out lately is because I've been absolutely snowed under with work. I did hear reports of one fella claiming that he hadn't been out detecting all summer because of the weather and how wet it was <laughs> in England we've had one of the driest summers for years it hasn't been massively hot but we've had about three days where you couldn't have detected and this guy he's got no job he's got transport but he's got no permissions and because nobody in their right mind will go detecting with him anyway in England the summer's always a difficult time for us to go out detecting I'm speaking for the majority of detectorists here because 
a lot of the fields are in crop. The farmers don't like you going into some of the pasture when there's a lot of young calves, when there's lambs and so on. So really the main detecting season starts at roughly this time of the year, early August, September, October and beyond because that's when all the crops come out and we can get back onto the ploughed fields. All the grassland has been either eaten off by the cows and sheep or it's been cut for silage. So from now we've got a pretty good run right through till the spring till the crops go back in again. So you can expect to see not only a lot more videos from me, but also a lot more videos from other UK detectorists. Nothing stopping us now, full steam ahead. That seems very, very light. Um. <laughs> if we don't find anything, I think we deserve to be shot before we get back in the car. That said, I was using the 13 inch E track with the 13 inch E track. Yeah, that's the E track model for dwarves. Yeah, oh, it would have been knackered like, <laughs> like all the other bits of crappy lead we found. <laughs> Just as well you're downwind of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>